everyone, it's Chelsea from Paper Octeo Studio, and today I'm sharing with you a little altered, um, I guess it's a gift box or a jewelry box. I think it might have come with jewelry in it, I'm not sure, but it's a strong hinged, uh, you know, snap hinged box um, that I had. I, I save these things, like even my iPhone box, they're really strong boxes. I save them and then I think I'm going to alter them sometime in the future uh, when I save them to make them into something. And I have a friend who is going to need a gift and I thought it would be fun to do something different with Abstract August today. Hashtag AJOS, Abstract August. I'm <clears throat> doing that all month. But I thought it would be fun to use uh, one of the prompts on something besides a tag because all my previous ones for the month so far have been on these shipping tags that I'm trying to use up that have paint on them. So <clears throat> that being said, I liked the blue color of this, but I didn't want to keep the logo on the bottom. So I used a little sanding block. Uh, these sanding blocks are great for art, but they're also um, they're made for your fingernails. Uh, if you do art, artificial nails or whatever. So that's what kind of sanding block it is. But I went to the bottom and I sanded off the the logo that was stamped on there in silver. And then I uh, wiped everything down and put a coat of matte medium over the whole thing. Then I taped around the edges of the top so that I wouldn't get any of my paint that I'm planning on putting in there. Um on the edges and I put a coat of gesso on that top part. It also has a sticker on it, a price sticker, but since the process that I'm planning on doing is not um, is going to be textured, I didn't worry about the sticker. Otherwise I would have had to sand that off and make everything smooth. So um, the, the prompt I'm doing is repeat and I was thinking about motions that you do that are repetitive. Or, you know, you do the same thing over and over and over. And a lot of abstract art, you will see a repeated shape or a repeated um, theme throughout the thing. And I thought that I would do that uh, and make a very textured, interesting top to my box by using some super heavy gesso. That's what that white stuff is. And then I got some different colors. I was kind of thinking of a beach theme, maybe. Um, I wanted to use pastels. I wanted it to match the blue part of the box, I didn't want to change that part. So I started with some different colors of blues and greens, teals, and then a portrait pink, which is kind of like a coral color, and some, um, I don't know, is that uh, raw umber, burnt umber maybe, which is kind of a brown color. And I was thinking when I mix it, mix any of these colors in with the super heavy gesso, I will get a pastel. And that was my big plan. That was my big plan. I'm sorry I'm off screen here. Um, yeah, I thought I had, there we go. <laughs> I altered my camera so that you could see, so that I would stop going off screen without even realizing that I was doing it. But um, I'm mixing different colors and making all these different shades of pastel, which look very pale in the video, but in actuality, they are much brighter than that. Um, I'm not sure why that the camera is blown out. Maybe I've got too much, uh, too much light or something. So as far as the repeat that I'm talking about, making a repeated motion, I'm using a couple different um, metal palette knives. These are offset palette knives. I have a smaller one and a larger one, and I just want to make these arched petal shapes, but I'm not going to make them into flowers. I just want the shape itself. It kind of looks like a shell or maybe it looks like a pick your pear cactus. Um, those were kind of the things I was thinking of. And I'm just trying to alternate the colors and then draw them all the way down the box. I at first was thinking that I would make them horizontally um, coming down to the place where the box opened but I couldn't remember after I put the tape on which side the box opened on. <laughs> I didn't want to do the tape off. So I decided I would just go ahead and make them uh, in a vertical and then they'll go sideways across the box when it's being used as a box. Um, this is gonna take a long time to dry. I don't know how long, but um, once it's completely dry, 
in a couple days, I will probably sand a little bit on the edges and just make it really smooth and then put a coat of a clear uh, heavy gloss sealer over the entire thing. Uh, that's my plan. And of course, when I took the photos at the end, it wasn't dry. And so it wasn't smoothed out yet because I wanted to get this video done and I didn't want to wait to take the photos. So the photos, you can see the box around the edge is still a little bit messy, but not too bad. But I just know that I need a little bit of cleanup and maybe I'm going to put some some heavy gloss gel over it, I think is what I'm going to do. So I'm not just mixing straight acrylic into the to the white. In some cases, I'm making a neutral by mixing the green and the brown together with the white. It's, it's a subtle difference, but I'm trying to vary the colors and not just repeat the same colors over and over, although they're the same they're not the, they're the same colors, but not the same tones. Some of them I've I've grayed down by using the opposing color. And as I'm going, the paint's starting to get a little bit dry and clumpy on my palette. This is just a piece of clear plastic that I'm using as a palette. And so I'm scraping it and just continuing to make these shapes. I did end up getting out... At first I was just going to do the whole thing with the smaller palette knife because it is a smaller project. But then I got out another round tipped larger one to make a few larger shapes to make it more interesting. But it's still the same repetitive arched shape with a palette knife. It's just a, a swoop, like press down, pull up, um, mark, and letting the, the edges of the heavy paint come up around the sides and make make kind of like a petal basically is all I can call it really although it doesn't necessarily look like petals when the thing is finished because it's not going around in a circle but you could absolutely make a flower this in the same way make an interesting textural um, acrylic flower or even with oil paint by doing the same thing only just going around in a circle and you would of course turn just turn the canvas or whatever you're using um, that would actually be kind of fun I, I might enjoy doing that as well. It, it's very textured and I, I find that appealing. I like it. I think this box will be super cute and then I'll probably uh, make some sort of jewelry like a bracelet or some earrings or something to match. Um, I need to get out my beads and play around with some jewelry. I haven't done it in a while and it's a lot of fun. It's fiddly because they're small and that's kind of what frustrates me but I like to make jewelry, so I will probably make something else to put in it. But I thought, why not make a pretty upcycled box while I'm giving a gift? It's kind of like two gifts, right? You get this this box, and then you also get whatever's inside of the box. <laughs> Maybe it's a million dollars inside the box. You don't know. <laughs> so just continuing to do this. And I did go and fill in a few of the edges. Um, there were a few spaces in between where I just used a small uh, palette knife to kind of stick in there and fill in with some colors because it just it needed to be filled completely in. I think on a canvas or something like that, this would be really cool looking and you would leave some some untouched space around the edges maybe. Maybe some space comes in around the edges and then it would look a lot like cactus. It really would. Uh, it would be pretty cool. But I am making the top of a box and I want every single space on there to be filled. So that's what I'm doing. Just continuing to mix the colors. I ended up with a bunch of the blue, pla blue paint left on the palette, but I used up every sing single other bit. And I also ended up having to get out more gesso. So you can see how much pain it takes when you do this because it's very thick, very, very thick. <laughs> so I think that looks pretty cool. I, I like the repetitiveness of it, but I did vary it slightly by making some wider ones and some more narrow ones, but it just, it looks cool. And I of course got paint all over the sides. So I had to wipe it down with, um, a baby wipe to get 
all the, the paint from my fingers because I got paint all over my fingers and then I got them all over the thing, you know, because I'm a mess. And here I am trying to save the excess paint, a weird neutral color and then the blue and then some of the green on the other palette knife. Um, I just keep these pieces of paper and then I scrape paint onto them and then I do other stuff with them. And so then I thought, you know, what would be really cool is if I put some glitter on this because because glitter because sparkle why not and the person that I've I've made it for is female so she probably likes glitter too right um who doesn't so I was first going to just sprinkle glitter like loose glitter over it and let it stick to the paint but then I thought you know it might come off so I decided to use my handy dandy favorite um diamond stickles glitter glue and just put it in some of the spots so then I needed something for the inside because the that logo is stamped at the bottom of the box too. I needed to cover that. And so I cut a piece of watercolor paper that is the size of the bottom of the box, which is like three and a half by two and a half. And then I'm just stenciling over it using the same colors and actually trying to just really literally use the paint that's not quite dry yet <laughs> on the palette or on that piece of paper that I had uh, scraped the paint onto to start my stenciling here. This is a Stencil Girl Stencil Club stencil, I think from not last month, but the month before. And it's it's pretty cool. It's got a lot of interesting pattern to it. So once I got that done, I decided I needed to jazz it up a little bit. So I got out my scribble sticks. And um, I know I told you guys that set two with all the pastels <laughs> wasn't very useful, but here I found a use for it. I needed the pastels in this case. Um, I'm dipping them in water because I think that they flow much better when you do that. Just dipping the tips in water and then putting them on. Maybe uh, blending them a little with my finger. I hope you guys are enjoying this video and this series. And if you are, of course, give give me a comment. Um, Join in, you guys. Join in. Use the hashtag AJOS Abstract August. Coming to you from Art Joy of Sharing Art Community on Facebook and Art Joy of Sharing live stream show. Um, we will be live streaming our abstract pieces uh, on Thursdays at 8:30 a.m. Pacific time, 10:30 Central. That's Peg Robinson and myself. We do it together. So now I've got some <clears throat> white uh, Posca pen. And I'm adding some sketchy lines and splatters. And after that was all dry, then I did a crazy thing. <laughs> not so crazy to me, but something you might not see uh, every day. I took that, um, oh, I did add some a little bit more punchy color with my uh, Stabilo Woodies real quick. And then I took my Stickles Glitter Glue and I applied it with a brush over the entire thing and just made the entire thing sparkly. Yeah. So when you look in the bottom of the box, you see the sparkly thing. It's kind of fun. So that's it for me. Uh, your close-ups are coming. Um, don't forget to uh, give this a thumbs up if you haven't already. Thanks. Bye-bye.